In this section, we will introduce you to some useful shell commands which you will likely use on a day-to-day -day basis. The ls command is one of the first commands that you will learn, and also one of the most commonly used. It tells you which files are in a particular directory. On its own, without any options, it will list the files in the current directory. Here is an example. A user lists the contents of their home directory. The ls command on its own tells them there are two files in their home directory, fruit.txt and vegetables.txt. You can provide various options to the ls command to get additional information. The dash l option provides additional details about the files. So here we see the read and write permissions on a file, the file owner, the group owner, the file size. In this case, it's a small file, only seven bytes in size. Next, we have the modified date and the file name. By default, the results are presented alphabetically, but you may provide options to show the results sorted by date, for example. Let me show you some examples. Here I'm in a directory with a similar couple of files in it. If I do the dash L option, I get a detailed list, sorted alphabetically. Now if I add the dash T option, then I'll get the results sorted by date order, newest first. I can reverse that and show newest last. Now, if I'm in a directory with a lot of files, this can be a useful way to see the last edited files at the bottom of the list. Now, by default, the ls command lists the contents of the current directory. However, you can also use it to show the contents of another directory. So I'm currently in a directory called examples one, but I can also show the contents of a directory somewhere else, called examples two. The man command will display an on-screen manual containing information about how each of the available options alter the default behavior of a command. As an example here, we are displaying the man page for the ls command. If a man page cannot be displayed on one screen, it will become paginated and it could be navigated by using any of the highlighted options here. Firstly, you can use the spacebar to scroll down and the B key to scroll up. You can also use the mouse scroll wheel, the up and down arrow keys or the page up and page down keys. Once you have finished navigating a man page, you can press the Q key to quit. If you are unsure what a command does or what options it provides, a useful starting point is to read the man page. The man command itself has a man page. To view this, run man man. Here I'm going to show you how to do this on the terminal. So firstly, let's enter the command man ls to display the man page. Now I'm using a few different methods to navigate around and once I have done, press Q to quit. The MKDIR, short for make directory, and RMDIR, short for remove directory, are commands to allow you to perform folder creation and deletion operations on the file system. In these examples here, firstly we're going to create an empty directory called shopping list. By default, MKDIR will create an empty directory in the current working directory, and in this case, this is home. In the second example here, we are demonstrating that you can create multiple empty directories in a single command, rather than executing the MKDIR command twice. By running ls with the dash l option added, we can see that each item that starts with the letter D signifies a directory rather than a file. Also, if you have terminal colours enabled, directories will be coloured in blue, whereas files are coloured white. Moving on to RMDIR. Here we are showing that you can remove this directory called testtier2 which we created above. 
and now if we run the ls command again we can see that there is an error message printed below because this directory no longer exists. Now it is important to note that rmdir only works for directories which are empty so if you try to delete a directory which has contents you will receive an error message. Let's demonstrate this on the terminal. So firstly if I show you the output of ls here we can see that we have one directory called examples which is coloured in blue. If I firstly create a new directory and let's call this tester I can quite easily remove this because we know it is empty. The examples directory here has content from previous tutorials and therefore it is not empty. If I was to try and run rmdir on examples pressing tab here to autocomplete we get this error message explaining the directory is not empty. Now if I run the ls command again we can see the directory has not been deleted. The cd command, short for change directory, allows you to change the current working directory within the file system. The pwd command will simply print this current working directory on screen. In these examples here, we are going to change the working directory to an existing folder called shopping list, which is underneath the home directory. If the shopping list folder did not exist, we would expect to see an error here. In most shells, the prompts will change to reflect the current working directory after the cd command has been run. If we execute the pwd command, we can see the full absolute path has been printed starting from the top of the file system known as the root directory. There are some useful shortcuts which you may use with the cd command and this is one of them here. For example, if we want to go one level above in the file system, you can use the two dot notation to represent the parent directory. This shortcut will work at all levels within the file system unless you are at the root directory. I will now show you a few examples of how to use the cd and pwd commands on the terminal. After listing the contents of the directories, let's first change directory into shopping list and then into a subdirectory called fruits. We can now use the dot dot notation to go up one directory and again to go all the way back to the home directory. You can also chain directories together, so here we're going to change straight into the fruits directory and we can also use the dot dot slash notation twice to go up two directories. Now by running the pwd we can see we're back in the home directory. If we were to browse back into the fruits directory and run pwd again we can see that the path has changed and we're now in the fruits directory. We've seen that the ls command can show you a detailed listing of the files in a directory, including timestamps on the files. The touch command can update the timestamp on a file. By default, it will update the access time and modification time on a file to the current time. There is also a special case where, if the file does not exist, touch will create an empty file with the current timestamp. Here, in this example, touch test file will create an empty file called test file. And here we see in the listing an empty file of zero bytes has been produced in this directory. I'll show you an example. Here in this directory we have fruit.txt and vegetables.txt. Let's see the timestamps on those files. And if I make a new file, which we sort in date order appears at the top with the current date. There's a few other options to the touch command. Perhaps one useful option is to apply the timestamp of one file to another file. Here we are applying the timestamp of fruits.txt to a new file meat.txt. Then if we list the detailed output of the directory, we will see that meat.txt has the same modification time as fruit.txt.
The rm command will allow you to remove files or directories. Here in this example, we remove a file called test file. And here, we are removing a file within another directory relative to the current one. It will remove just the file and not the directory containing it. Finally, you can apply a recursive option that will delete this test deer directory and all files within it. A command you need to be careful of when you run it. Let me show you some examples. Here we have a couple of directories and a file in the current directory. I'm going to remove test file. There we go, it's been removed. Let's look inside the shopping list directory and we're going to remove vegetables.txt from the shopping list directory. Now we list the contents and see that vegetables.txt has been removed. Now back within our current directory we have the test deer directory. I'm going to remove the whole directory and its contents. And now that's been removed. CP command allows you to copy files and directories on your file system. Here are some examples. Starting with a file called fruit.txt, we are going to make a copy called vegetables.txt. Copy, source, destination. As a result, we have created vegetables.txt, which is an identical copy of fruit.txt. Here we can see that you can also copy files to other places in your file system. So from the current folder, we are copying vegetables.txt to the parent directory. The dot dot means the parent directory. So as a result, we can list the contents of the parent directory and we can see that vegetables.txt has been copied to the directory above. And finally, as with the rm command, we can use dash r for recursive copy. In this example, we copy the full contents of the shopping list directory to our new directory called groceries. And here we see as a result, we now have two directories which are identical. So let's run through those examples. I'm already in the shopping list folder and I just have a fruit.txt file. I'm copying that to vegetables.txt. Now, let's see, the only difference here is the file name and the modification time, but the content is the same. Now we're going to copy vegetables.txt to the folder above. You can list the folder above, or we can change directory to the folder above and list the contents. And finally, we'll do a recursive copy of the shopping list directory to groceries. The original directory remains the same, and now we have another copy called groceries. If we list the contents of both, you will see they have the same files. The MV or move command can move files around your file system and also has the additional functionality of renaming files. Here we see some examples. We're going to move vegetables.txt into the shopping list directory. And here, as a result, the vegetables.txt file has been removed from the current directory and put into the shopping list directory. In this second example, we are creating a new file called seafood.txt using the touch command. And we are going to rename it as fish.txt. Move, source, destination. And we are going to move the fish.txt file into the shopping list directory. We can also combine these last two operations into one command and just say move seafood.txt 
to shopping list directory as fish.txt and that will do the two of them combined. Let me show you some examples. In the current folder we have vegetables.txt. The shopping list directory we have fruit.txt. We can move the vegetables.txt inside the shopping list directory. Now when we list the current directory we can see that it's gone. Look inside the shopping list directory and we can see that it's there. We can also move it back using the dot notation to say move to the current directory. And here we've moved it back. We can also rename it in the current directory. Here we see it's been renamed. And then we can move it to the shopping list directory as vegetables.txt as well. And here we can see it's been moved and renamed at the same time. We can also move the whole folder, effectively renaming it. Here we've renamed it and now we're going to move it back. So MV will rename either files or folders. The echo command allows you to display a string of text. The default behavior is to display it to your screen. Here we see the echo command followed by a string of text. And then the text is echoed on your terminal window. There are some additional options which allow you to redirect a string of text into a file. By using the single greater than symbol, we are replacing the content of the fish.txt file with the string cod. So the single greater than symbol overwrites a file. The double greater than symbol allows you to append to a file. So having replaced fish.txt with the cod line, we can now add a new line to this file which will not remove the original content. Let's see some examples. Here we echo output to the screen. Now, as we have a shopping list folder, we can echo the COD string into a file. This file does not need to exist. It will either be replaced or created with this single greater than symbol, also called a redirect. And we can also show you what's in that file, just a single line. And now we can add to that file with the append notation. And now we will have two lines in that file, cod and trout. Now you can do the append as well on a file that doesn't exist. So you could echo salmon into the shopping list slash fish two text file, which will now create and append. So even with the append option, a file will still be created if it doesn't exist. The cat command, short for concatenate, allows you to join files together and display file contents on screen. In this first example here, we are going to open a file named fruit, read the contents and display on screen. In the second example, we are going to open and read the contents of multiple files, join them together and print the combined result on screen. You can see the first four lines are from the fruits file and the bottom lines would be contained in the fish file. If you'd like to join files together and write the combined result to a file rather than printing on screen, we use the redirection operator to change the output destination. In this case, it will be to a new file named shop. In the final example, we're displaying the full list by printing the contents of the shop file. If you're wanting to open a file and decide to use cat, you may notice that if the file contains a lot of data, 
only the last few lines are displayed on screen. To view the whole of the file, you would need to scroll up in the terminal window. A more useful command here would be to use an application called less, which allows you to display the contents of a file or files in a page format, very similar to how man pages are displayed on screen. In the examples here, we are firstly going to open up the fruit file from the previous tutorial using less. Secondly, we are going to open the dictionary words file which should exist on your system. Identical to how man pages are navigated, you can use any of these highlighted options to navigate through a file in less. Please see the man pages tutorial for more information. By using either cat or less, you will open and read the entire contents of a file or files, however, this may not be what you want to achieve. If you only want to print the first few lines of a file, for example some table headers, or the final few lines of a file, for example some summary information, then you may want to use either the head or tail command. By using head, you will print the first few lines of a given file or files. In this first example, we have passed the dash n parameter to specify the number of lines to print, so we only see two lines printed from the fruit file. Alternatively, if you wanted to print the last two lines of the fruit file, then we switch the head command to tail, the rest of the command is the same, and here we see the output is different. If we did not pass the dash n parameter to either command, the default number of lines to print is 10 for both commands. Finally, if your file contains fewer lines than the number of lines specified with either the dash n parameter or the default, the entire file will be printed identically to how cats would print the file. Grep is a utility command which allows you to filter text based on a search pattern. In the first example, we are searching for the word apple inside the fruits file. It appears twice here because the word is listed twice in the file. Grep accepts a variety of search patterns including individual characters, words or regular expressions. In the second example, we are searching for words which begin with the letter O. In this context, the caret character is used to match lines which begin with some pattern or string. The final example demonstrates how we can search for two strings in a single grep operation using a regular expression and the OR parameter. Grep is a very powerful command, so we recommend to read the man page for more information about search filters and generic command usage. Let's run a few grep commands on the system dictionary file to search for a few words. Firstly, find any word which matches the string orange. Here we see a lot of results, so let's only show those which begin with the string orange. We can filter this even more by only showing words that both begin and end with the string orange. Now we only see the word orange itself because no other word matches the pattern that we search for in the system dictionary file. 